Good morning, Atlanta. Uh, I just want to thank the organizers of Gathering for Gardner and all the other people who are working behind the scenes for another amazing uh, few days. Um, so I'm going to be talking to you about symmetry samplers, um, which means I guess I need to say what I mean by symmetry and what I mean by samplers. Um, so the symmetries that we're going to be looking at here are symmetries of the plane. Uh, and if you had the good fortune to see Dora Schatzschneider's lovely Escher talk, uh, you've got a little bit of a, a prep of thinking about these notions. So all of the symmetries of the plane are going to be either rotations, reflections, translations, or glide reflections. Um, and then we can take that information and look at the symmetry types of complicated patterns. So for example, the famous result, again, um, this came up uh, in regards to the Poya paper uh, in Doris's talk, uh, the 17 wallpaper groups. These are the 17 possible symmetry structures for patterns that repeat in two independent directions in the plane. Right? So that's the sort of classification that we're going to be looking at. Uh, and those are what we're going to be sampling. The samplers that I have in mind are traditional samplers in the world of fiber arts. So here are a couple of examples, one a little bit more traditional than the other. Um, the one on the uh, left, uh, that I think that's what sort of jumps to most people's minds if they've seen samplers before when they think of a sampler. It's a design that is made up of a bunch of different patterns so that you can try out different things. Um, and so on the left, we have Norwegian Frieze, which is this uh, artwork by Heather Ames Lewis, where she actually searched through traditional Norwegian knitting and was able to find that they represented all of the seven Frieze groups. So those are like the wallpaper groups, except they only repeat in one direction. And so that's one pattern for each of those. Um, and then Carolyn Yackel, from whom you'll be hearing soon, uh, has this sampler in Tamari, where you embroider on the surface of a sphere. And there are 14 symmetry types in uh, spherical symmetries. And so this is one ball for each of those symmetries. Right? Um, here's another sampler that's a little bit different. So this is Wallpapers in Cross Stitch by Mary Shepard. It's actually the earliest symmetry sample that I know of and wallpapers, right? So we're talking wallpaper groups. But there aren't 17 there. <laughs> huh. Um, I, I, I'm sure that a lot of you can already see what's going on. The problem is that this is counted cross stitch. It's done on a square grid. And not all of the wallpaper groups are compatible with a square grid. You actually lose five of them. So in this case, there are only 12 symmetry groups, wallpaper groups, that are possible in counted cross stitch. And this artwork is proving that you can get those 12. So there's one pattern for each of the 12. Right? Um, so. Uh, I was interested in sort of carrying this over to double knitting because I tend to design more into knitting. And ideally, you would be able to do all of the counted cross stitch groups. But at, trust me, I've tried. It turns out that at least with this type of knitting, the stitches are just not close enough to square to make convincing 90 degree rotations. So the bad news is that you lose three groups. So there are only nine groups that are going to work in double knitting. The good news is that they're really fun to design with. And so this is actually something in particular, if you knit yourself, that you can make. Um, I've put in red uh, crystalline and nitty, because those are the search terms that I would suggest that you feed into Google. Um, and nitty is a free uh, magazine. So um, you can take this pattern and make it. Um, I, I forgot, by the way, to mention that the, in some sense, the real purpose of this talk is to say you should go to the table where I'm sitting over there, because most of the objects that I'm about to show now are over there on that table, so you can see them in person. Um, another make your own. Um, that's not on the table. That's on me. This is a shawl that contains all of the seven freeze groups in knitted lace. And there's more math behind it that I'm happy to describe to you. That one is not free. It's for sale. But the proceeds go to the Association for Women in Mathematics. Um, so if you are interested or know any lace knitters who are interested, um, perhaps that will be of interest. Uh, and I'd done a couple of other you know, sort of lace symmetry pieces and thought I'd kind of worked that through. But I had this great idea in just January, so it's just been a few months, that I could actually use beads to label the symmetries in the artwork themselves. So these are a couple pieces of artwork that I made. It's a little bit hard to see in the projections because the beads are kind of small. But the symmetries are color coded. And the blue one is actually over on the table there. So I invite you to see that in person if you have a moment. Um, and, and 
uh, finally, this, this being G for G13, right? You have to have a 13. Luckily, there's a 13 in this, which you all know if you saw Bob's talk. Um, and that is that there turn out to be 13 symmetries in bead crochet rope. They're wallpaper symmetries. It's a little bit complicated. It's a planar design that wraps around the cylinder that's the bead crochet rope. So this jewelry set shows those 13 symmetries and the flat woven pieces show you the flat version so that you can really see the symmetries. Uh, a, a nice printed card that explains all of this is my uh, gift to you in the gift exchange. Um, and that's also over on the table so you can see all the small details. Um, and with that, thank you. <laughs>